This is breaking news from Channel 13 Eyewitness News. And we are starting tonight at 6 o'clock with that breaking news. State health leaders now say a third person has died from the coronavirus. We're told that person is from Marion County, over the age of 60, and had been hospitalized. So now we have nearly 80 positive cases of coronavirus across the state of Indiana. A local health network tonight is trying to relieve concerns by offering drive through screenings in Boone County. These screenings come as some health networks are reporting shortages in the coronavirus testing supplies. Our 13 Investigates reporter Sandra Chapman tonight shows you what's limited and how streamlining patients outside the ER helps conserve medical supplies inside. Sick Hoosiers lining up for viral screenings outside of this Witham Health Services hospital in Whitestown. The idea is to determine whether they're sick enough to go to the ER. Do they need to go home or do they need to seek additional medical care? It's a new step to help keep emergency services for those who need it most, and it helps the Witham staff to conserve medical supplies. That is always a concern. Right now, oh, we have supplies and we are monitoring our supplies and we're trying to be very prudent with what we do have and use them wisely. All across the country, we've heard about the shortage of masks, but workers now tell 13 Investigates the actual items necessary to conduct coronavirus testing are in short supply. It is very frustrating for those of us working to help people every day without the tools needed. In order to obtain the specimen from a patient, we have to have the proper swab collection tube. Those are also on back order due to a shortage. We still won't be able to test the volume of patients needed without those. Indiana's top health official is aware of the problem. We have limited amounts of viral swabs, viral transport media, and the personal protective equipment. It's why Dr. Chris Box is doubling down and urging those with mild symptoms to visit sites like this one in Whitestown. We have had 140 plus people go through this clinic. Or stay home and out of local emergency rooms. She's also asking hospital staff to conserve the equipment as much as possible as the state tries to temporarily fill some of the gaps. A couple of them are getting into that area where we're concerned that over the next 96 hours or so they could start to run short of certain things. We know what they're experiencing and what their needs are and how those needs change on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. The commissioner says all hospitals have provided an assessment for where they are during this crisis. In fact, each hospital provides at least two updates per day. Now, while the state can help fill in some of the gaps, it can't fully restock all of the hospitals across Indiana. In Boone County, I'm Sandra Chapman with 13 Investigates. We're following some breaking news out of Bloomington tonight. We're learning a student at IU has now tested positive for the coronavirus. That person has been in self-isolation off campus for the last seven days. Tonight, school officials are trying to figure out who may have come in contact with that student. So far, a dozen other students have been tested. Not all the results are back yet. And also happening today, IU Bloomington announcing all spring graduation ceremonies have been postponed, but a new date has not been announced yet. They've already moved all remaining classes online. And the FAA said today an air traffic control supervisor here in Indianapolis tested positive for COVID-19. The work areas were evacuated last night and an industrial cleaning company was called in. But that center stayed open and operational the entire time. Well, as testing in our state ramps up this weekend, researchers will be poring over the results, perhaps thousands of results, looking for new information that could help them turn a corner in the fight against COVID-19. Our Rich Van Wyk explains. 23 new cases overnight, bringing the total number of Hoosiers diagnosed with COVID-19 to 79. I'm not surprised by those numbers at all. Uh, as we increase testing across the state, we're going to find more and more cases. And running hundreds, likely thousands more tests, which may provide doctors critical clues to fighting the virus. It's not a clear picture yet, uh, only because of the limited number of tests. Thomas Dzinski is an epidemiologist at the Fairbanks School of Public Health. But as we test more and more people, we'll get a, a more comprehensive picture of the disease across the state of Indiana. More testing might give public health officials a better picture of the most infected areas of the state. Who is at most risk? 
how the virus is transmitted, and much more. How long you could have this disease, um, do, when do you clear infection, more testing may even tell us then down the road that uh, can you get this disease again. Many people will likely be disappointed that not everyone needs to be tested. We need to understand what the disease is, especially in the very old or those that are immunocompromised. Is this information that could save lives? I think it's absolutely information that's going to save lives. Lives of people already sick and those trying to avoid getting sick. Rich Van White, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. The virus also has led to the postponing of Indiana's primary election. The governor today issuing an executive order postponing the primary for one month. So instead of heading to the polls May 5th, voters will cast ballots June 2nd. The goal is to keep election workers and voters safe. The Indiana Secretary of State, Connie Larson, says that she's heard from county election officials and they say they're having a pretty hard time right now hiring poll workers. But I would say there are many displaced service workers and others in this state of Indiana who I hope that we can recruit and pay them to work our elections. We're told both Republican and Democratic Party leaders are supporting the move and also efforts to make it easier for people to vote with an absentee ballot. The details have yet to be approved now by the Indiana Election Commission. And just in, USA Swimming now wants the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo postponed. They say the pandemic right now is preventing the athletes from training properly. In a statement, they say, quote, our world-class swimmers are always willing to race anyone, anytime, and anywhere. However, pressing forward amid the global health crisis this summer is not the answer." End quote. We're following some breaking news tonight at 6 out of eastern Indiana where four people are now dead and two others are still missing. This is in Franklin County. Police are telling us two vehicles were apparently swept away in high water after a bridge was partially washed out. Tonight, police aren't releasing the identities of the victims yet, but we'll keep you posted. COVID-19 has changed a few things for Metro Police. Officers are still out on the job, on the streets, keeping our city safe. Right now, however, at the start of each shift, officers are meeting in their zones instead of at the regular district roll calls. Officers are also asked to stay home if they happen to not be feeling well. And since they are responding to calls and serving the public, officers are trained to recognize for the key signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Obviously, if someone is showing symptoms and signs of illness, we're asking officers to be safe. We're giving officers the necessary uh, personal protective equipment. Right now, the district offices are closed to the general public, but if you have questions, you can call each district with your questions and also share your concerns. Well, there is more help available tonight for Hoosiers who need it. Indiana 211 has created a new website to answer your questions about the coronavirus. This website has a link to multiple resources. There you can learn where to find food assistance, counseling, and internet services. They're adding 30 more positions to answer that hotline. So if you need help tonight, call 211 or head to their website. We've put that link for you on WTHR.com.